everyone and welcome to AMC Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm Chris Lee Kennedy and this is the show we bring you the day's biggest movie news and of course we give you insight into what it all means. Joining me as always is AMC Movie News Senior Editor, Mr. John Campia. Greetings and salutations everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie related show in the world coming to you live from the Stream.TV studios here in Hollywood, California. We are so glad you decided to make us part of your day. And we also have joining us our AMC Movie News Production Manager, Mr. Dennis Sen. Hey, everyone. Uh, I noticed in the comments yesterday that uh, people were still asking about your, your dress. Like, I could not believe it. I, I Seriously, I took a whole section of the show yesterday to explain why I'm wearing the jackets now. Yeah. And somebody still put, John, why are you wearing jackets? And I wrote back, <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> like, really? Are you really asking me that? Oh, well. It's all about the moms, folks. It's all about the moms. All right, as everyone anxiously awaits the upcoming Avengers sequel, Avengers Age of Ultron, Marvel released a new piece of concept art that has everyone buzzing. This image shows the Hulk fighting the Iron Man Hulk Buster armor. John, what do you think of this image? Um, I, I, I'm... I might be peeing myself. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's <laughs> awesome, awesome. When I saw this art, okay, for, it's not so much the design. I mean, it, it looks, it does look great. It's not, but just the fact that we are going to see Hulkbuster armor. Because remember, in the in the last Iron Man, Iron Man three, there was that one. Iron Man armor that kind of people thought was the yeah. Hulkbuster armor is the one that held up the big steel beam. And maybe that's a prototype or something. They called it Igor. That was is that, the, yeah, 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 I remember that. This is clearly a much bigger version yeah. of Igor. This is a Hulkbuster outfit. And if, when you see the whole picture, you see that Hulk's, in the, in the concept art, Hulk's feet are actually dug into the ground sliding backwards. So you actually have the Hulkbuster going on the offensive. Now, nothing beats the Hulk. But still, this is very cool. Because I remember at the end of, the, of Avengers thinking, OK, Hulk is never just going to be completely domicile. He's not going to be tamed. Uh, you are going to have problems with the Hulk at some point because of the nature of who the Hulk is. And I'm glad to see that the next Avengers film is not going to ignore that fact, that clearly there's a problem <laughs> that they have to deal with. I think this is great. I'm so excited. Just this one picture has me totally stoked. Dennis, your reaction when you saw this art? Yeah, the ultimate story, the first storyline was Hulk uh, rampaging through New York and then the Avengers assembling to try and stop him. Right. Uh, I guess they didn't really use that storyline, but maybe they're going to bring it back. I, the thing I noticed, too, is that, one, the, the Hulkbuster armor is much larger than the Hulk oh, himself. Huge. He's huge. Uh, and he's also using the, the red and gold design. And, uh, yeah, it, it, we all thought it was that Igor design in, in the Iron Man 3, but mm -hmm. it, was, it was much smaller. I watched that special last night. It was like an hour long. It was basically a behind the scenes almost documentary right. <laughs> about just Marvel Studios in general. But the last 10 minutes gave us some cool footage of Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain America 2, which you already saw, mm. and, and, and then some concept art from uh, Avengers. And I think they showed a little bit of Ant-Man, but I don't think that that Ant-Man footage was part of the actual movie. It was that, that uh, Kind of that te not teaser that I think test it was footage that, that test footage that that uh, Edgar Wright Edgar had, had done a had while done. ago. But I'm super excited to see see the uh, Hulk Buster armor in the next one, and yeah, I, I just hope uh, I hope that it isn't a situation where they're testing it out that they're actually fighting. Yeah, it looks like in the concept art, it looks like there's damaged structures around them. Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling they're fighting. But even if it is, even if it as you fear is just them, you know what, Tony says, I've got this new armor, I want to put it through its paces. Mm -hmm. You know, Bruce, suit up, Hulk up, and let's, let's put this armor through its Even if it's that, I would have fun watching it. I think it would be a lot of fun. Because I, I know I, at least once, I would love to see Hulk and Thor fighting again. Yeah. I think Because I think it would be really funny uh, if they do it that way. We should probably also mention the other concept art mm -hmm. that came out. Because we got our first concept looks at Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Mm -hmm. Um, your thoughts on, on those outfits that we saw? I, I like them. I mean, I like the Scarlet Witch one more than the Quicksilver one. That one's a bit plain, but it is better than the DJ emo DJ one that the X Men <laughs> has. Uh, I like the Scarlet Witch one because it's it looks very practical. You know, she's wearing like this jacket and jeans. I mean, they're colored red, but it's not that. There's no way they would use the original Scarlet Witch costume. That was just oh, way oh my too gosh. over the no, top. No, yeah. So I, I, I like this practical look for it. 
Um, I, I got. I was indifferent mm -hmm. to, because you know, a lot of people forget. I saw some people reacting to the Quicksilver drawings that we saw. Remember, they're just concept art. And I remember to me, it looks like he's wearing a, a unitard <laughs> gray suit. What's so great about it? And remember, we've seen the Quicksilver from X-Men Days of Future Past. We've seen him in live picture. We actually see the actor in the outfit, and we can look at that and pick it apart. We're not seeing the, the actual actors. No. These are just pieces of concept art. So I, I never got too excited or too dismissive of them uh, based on what I saw. But that being said, it's still pretty cool actually seeing something. Yes. You know, it makes it all more tangible. It makes it all more real for us at this point. But for me, it's all about a real Hulkbuster outfit. And ultimately, you know the Hulk's going to kick its ass. <laughs> Hulk is going to beat it. But still, seeing it up there is going to be awesome. Anyway, what's next? All right, well, more Ghostbusters talk is swirling around. Deadline is now reporting, <clears throat> excuse me, that the next Ghostbusters film is looking at starting production in early 2015. But long-attached director Ivan Reitman, who also directed the original Ghostbusters films, has decided to step away from the project and will no longer direct it. Reitman said he made the decision not to direct the new film after the funeral of his friend, Ghostbusters star, Harold Ramis. Dennis, could a new Ghostbusters film actually happen? I actually think it is happening. I think Sony had, has already green-lit it. Personally, I'm not really that interested anymore. I mean, you have Harold Ramis passing away, Bill Murray's still not in it, and you have Ivan Reitman, who directed the first two, now leaving the project. So I don't know if it's going to capture the essence of what Ghostbusters was. And you, you just only you have Dan Aykroyd and you have Ernie Hudson. You got half of the half of the team. So right. I, I don't know. I, I know. Aykroyd said that the original team isn't really in it that much, but even still, might, might as well just reboot it from the beginning. Yeah, I, I still don't believe this is going to happen. <laughs> Amy, Amy Pascal, honcho over at Sony Studios, is saying they're going to do it, and they're going to start shooting maybe a year from now, maybe a little under a year from now is when they'll start shooting. That's an awful long way yeah. away to say call a strike. So I don't believe this is actually greenlit, yeah. per se. Pascal says they're doing it. I still have my doubts, but I'm with you. If there's no Bill Murray, there's no Harold Ramis, now there's no Ivan Reitman, just reboot it. I mean, I understand Sony right now is really into mining their franchises. They're getting the Spider-Man universe really up and running. They're expanding that universe. They got their James Bond up and running. They're looking at reviving a couple of others. They really want Ghostbusters to go and they want it to work. But at this point, don't cameo anybody. Don't yeah. don't don't say these are the new generation. Don't say and just reboot the darn thing. If because seriously, it's not going to feel anything like the original. And you know it should be noted that Reitman said he's still going to produce this one, but we all know what that means. It means nothing. It, it means he could show up one day and, and have some input in one meeting. It could mean he's on set every single day, but it's probably going to be the former. So I, I just don't see the point and calling this a new Ghostbusters. Just reboot the damn thing and, and move on from there. And I still don't think it's going to happen. Amy Pascal will probably prove me wrong, but I still don't think yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah, one year is a long way off. It's a long way off. All right. Those are folks come to that part of the show for buy or sell. Here's how this works. In front of her, Chris Lee's got a few other items in the world of movie news. She's going to run them down. Then Dennis and I are simply going to say whether we buy it or sell it. So, Chris Lee, what do we got? Attack the Block writer and director Joe Cornish is said to be directing the upcoming film Section 6, an exploration of the formation of Great Britain's secret intelligence agency, Military Intelligence Section 6, known more commonly as MI6. Cornish has been rumored to also be directing the next installment of the Star Trek franchise and recently co-wrote the script for Marvel's upcoming film Ant-Man. John, buy or sell the sounds of Cornish and Section 6. I'm going to buy it. I mean, this sounds pretty cool. I, first of all, Cornish is a, is a guy who is getting around, and it feels like it's inevitable he's going to be a household name sooner or later, especially if the stuff with Star Trek works out. He's written Ant-Man. A lot of people loved Attack the Block. And this sounds like a really cool, I love espionage, spikes kind of stuff. And going into the actual MI6, which is, you know, what James Bond is supposed to be a part of, I think that sounds cool. This is a nice match for me to buy. I'm gonna buy it as well. I don't. I'm not too familiar with Joe Cornish's work. I know he had co-written some of the stuff on Adventures of Tintin, right? And, and, and a lot of the stuff down the pipeline we haven't seen yet. But I'm interested in the whole MI6 thing because they're gonna talk about the formation of it and kind of how it works. And it, it's something I'm not too familiar with. Right. And, neither am I. And I'm very intrigued. And you know, the James Bond stuff is 
that's like movie type yes, stuff. Yes, yes, so, yes. So this will be hopefully a more realistic take. All right, what's next? A new and final trailer for the upcoming The Amazing Spider-Man 2 has hit the web and shows us a lot more of Harry Osborn, the action, and some new footage. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 hits AMC theaters on May 2nd. Not close enough for me, but Dennis, do you buy or sell the new Amazing Spider-Man 2 trailer? I buy it, buy it, buy it. It's <laughs> awesome. It's filled, It's what a final trailer is supposed to do, which is, you know, they kind of reveal some of the action sequences in, in the previous trailers, but in the last one, you want to kind of lay it all on the table. And they, that's what they did. They showed all these scenes with Green Goblin. I, I really love the Green Goblin fight scene with Spider Man at the end of this trailer. Oh, yeah, yeah. They show a wider shot of the rhino the, in a, a rhino pose. Yeah, which was interesting. Yeah, he's much larger than I thought. Yeah. And, you know, and they showed some more of Electro, but they're showing basically how this. The Sinister Six is gonna come together for the for the next movie, and that's how you know it's a good trailer when not only you're looking forward to this movie, you're looking forward <laughs> to the next movie. Uh, another thing I did notice was they are trying to make Andrew Garfield slash Peter Parker kind of more dorkier because there was a lot of complaints in the first one that he was too emo. Right. And so we've seen like a scene in one of the previous trailers with him with all that. Uh, like dirt on his face and and him and Aunt May kind of he's like oh I was trying to clean out the chimney you know right. that type of stuff they did that again with uh, skipping the rock scene with uh, Harry Osborn he's like oh it's all in the wrist you know so <laughs> I think they're trying to lighten up his character yeah I think a lot of people and for me this also this is a big buy huge buy love this trailer uh, it does a couple things one it it lets us know that, no, the Harry Osborn character is going to be a key significant character. The other trailers, you never really picked up on that. You, I mean, maybe we knew, but you don't pick up on it because of the trailers. This trailer is Harry Osborn, key central figure in this movie. That's important. The action looks great. You mentioned a lot of people complain sometimes about the first Amazing Spider-Man that he was a little bit too emo. I keep having this argument with some people about that. It's like you do realize in the scenes that Peter comes across as emo, terrible crap has just happened to him in his life, right? You do get that, right? Either he's just been bullied or his uncle died or everything else is going to hell in his life. It's, you got to forgive him a little bit of that. And when he was outside of those situations, I thought he came across as dork, but I think you're absolutely right. I think they went out of their way in this trailer and in some of the previous ones to highlight the levity of Peter Parker, and I think that's key. I, I see nothing but love in this trailer. Mm -hmm. Just love it. All right, what's next? Speaking of new trailers, a brand new Godzilla trailer has just hit the web. The movie opens in AMC theaters everywhere on March 6th, May 16th. John, buy or sell this newest Godzilla trailer? Sell. I'm Ooh. going to sell this trailer, and here's why. Not because I don't think it's a half-decent trailer on its own. As a new trailer, though, I, I watched it and it's like, why did I just bother watching this? It it's essentially 80% of the last trailer, with a few minor differences here and there. It shows you, like, there's that one shot we didn't see in the last trailer of that big, almost like tail mark going through the, the countryside that leads into the ocean. That was a new shot. You show, it has the same line from Ken Watanabe, but then you see him saying the last part of it. Other than that, I thought it was a very minor changes to a trailer. So as a new trailer, I'm going to give it a sell. Dennis? I'm going to buy it. I liked it. I liked all the Godzilla teases in it, the mm. teaser, teaser shots. And also, the biggest thing is there's a flying thing that oh, people, yeah, right there. That people are speculating <laughs> that could be either Mothra or Rodan. Right. I think it's Rodan. I agree. I think it's Rodan. Uh, so people are excited about that. We don't know if Rodan, if he's in it, if he's going to be an ally or he's going to be an enemy of Godzilla. So for me, just for that shot, I'm going to buy it. All right, folks. Well, listen, this is normally the part of the show where we do mailbag, but we are foregoing mailbag today because today is the official start of our superhero comic book March Movie Madness Tournament. We've been talking about it since yesterday. If you follow me on Facebook, you know I've, been, I've already put up the brackets. But today starts the tournament. Here's how this works. We're going to go through the tournament. We're going to list down the seating and the matchups, and then you guys are going to go and vote on each matchup and tell us who advances to the next round. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can look in the description of this video, and right near the top of the description, you'll see the link where you go to vote on all the individual matchups. We're going to let you vote for about the next 36 hours. And then on Friday, we're going to announce the winners of round one and give you the brackets for round two. So as you know, we've got the top 32 teams. And let's bring up, first of all, the Nolan bracket. Here is the Nolan bracket. Now, I'm going to point something out here. The brackets and the seating all took place from a mixture of me and some of the guys here at AMC 
ranking the films, but then also going online, measuring critic ratings, fan responses, and anticipation levels, and that's how we set up all the seating. So there are some movies here that are seated lower than I would have them on my personal list, some that are seated higher, but you get the idea. So let's go down the seeds for the Nolan bracket. Number one, the number one seed in the Nolan bracket is uh, the Dark Knight, and hold on a second, I'm gonna bring up my, uh, my own individual graphic here mm -hmm. so I've got it right in front of me. The number two seed in the Nolan bracket is Spider-Man 2, and damn it, give me a second, I gotta bring this up here. <laughs> okay, here we go. So Nolan bracket, number three seed in the Nolan bracket is X-Men, the original X-Men film. The number four seed is the original Thor. The number five seed is Batman Begins. The number six seed is the original Christopher Reeve Superman movie. The number seven seed is Man of Steel. The number eight seed is Captain America, the first Avenger. The number nine seed is Watchmen. Number 10 is the original Hellboy. Number 11 is The Dark Knight Rises. Seated number 12 is Dread. Seated number 13 is The Incredible Hulk. That's the one with Edward Norton. Number 14 is Punisher Warzone. Number 15 is Kick-Ass Kick -Ass 2, and rounding out the seeding in the Nolan bracket is Iron Man 3. So, there's your seeds. They are now matched up in individual competition, which you can see behind me. We're gonna run down now the individual starting matchups that you guys are gonna be voting on. So let's look at matchup number one. The first matchup in the Nolan bracket is going to be the number one seed, Dark Knight, versus the number 16 seed, Iron Man 3. Dennis, who are you going to vote for and who do you think is going to advance? Uh, this one's probably one of the easiest ones on here. While I did like Iron Man 3, I'm not a hater of it. I, I don't have any problem with the Mandarin character or anything like that. The Dark Knight is obviously a superior film to it. It's, yeah. a, it's like one of the best comic book movies of all time. So I think it's that one's easily going to win and that's the one I'm voting for. Yeah, I got to say the same thing. While I also like Iron Man 3, you just, I mean... How often does a number one seed in anything lose to a number 16 seed? Yeah. That ain't gonna happen here. Uh, obviously, a lot of people do have the problem with the Mandarin stuff. Yeah. Among other things, Dark Knight's so popular, Dark Knight Rises advances. Chris Lee, which one do you think is gonna advance? Dark Knight for sure. All right. I loved Iron Man 3. I thought it was fun and great and exciting, but the Dark Knight just does it for me. <laughs> All right, so that's you heard our picks, but the important thing is what are you going to vote for? Once again, the link to the voting is in the description of the video. Let's move on to the second matchup. The second matchup down at the bottom of the bracket is Spider-Man 2 going against Kick-Ass 2. Um, once, much like the first one, I, I see this as a no contest. Spider-Man 2, one of the greatest comic book films ever made. Kick-Ass 2, I enjoyed, but got a mixed reaction. I can't see any way Spider-Man 2 loses this one. Dennis? Yeah, Spider-Man 2 is gonna win this easily. And I, I enjoyed both films, but Spider-Man 2 was on a different level than Kick-Ass 2. If it had been Kick-Ass 1 versus Spider-Man 2, I think it'd be a little bit closer. But yeah, or Spider-Man 3 versus Kick-Ass 2. Yeah, that, that would be closer too. <laughs> Spider-Man 3 did not make our top 32. All right, Chris Lee, who do you see winning this, uh, this matchup? I am 3 is a charm again, Spider-Man for me. All right, now we start to get, the, the, the matchups start to get yeah. a little bit tighter now. The next matchup is the number three seed, the original X-Men movie, against the number 14 seed, Punisher Warzone. I'm gonna say this is gonna be a, a cakewalk for X-Men because, simply because, not many people saw Punisher Warzone. No. Um, and, and there are people who have problems with it. X-Men, the original X-Men, is the movie that revitalized and basically resurrected the whole comic book genre single-handedly. Um, it, it's gonna move on to the second round. Dennis? X-Men, easily. And, and Warzone, I actually watched off of your recommendation. I thought it was decent. Yeah, you know, I liked it. It wasn't great, but it was decent. But there, it stands no chance whatsoever. Chris Lee? I'm going with X-Men, although I do love Punisher. I love all of the movies that in the Punisher franchise, but I think X-Men will be the winner. All right, let's move on to the next one. The number four seed, the original Thor film versus the number 13 seed, The Incredible Hulk, uh, the one with Edward Norton. It's important to keep in mind that that's the one we're talking about. Once again, I like the Edward Norton Hulk, um, but Thor to me, People know that I, people who watch the show know that I actually like Thor more than the original Iron Man. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, this is Thor's matchup. Dennis, I didn't like Thor as much as you did, even though I did really like it. Uh, but it's still I still favor it over the Incredible Hulk, which I actually really liked with Edward Norton. And so I wouldn't have minded if Ed, Edward Norton stayed 
as that character. Mark yeah. Ruffalo is great as well. Yeah, absolutely. But I think this is Thor's going to win it. But in my mind, the two movies are a little bit closer than most people think. Chris Lee. I actually agree with Dennis. This is a tough one for me because I loved Edward Norton as Hulk. I mean, I prefer Mark Ruffalo now that we have him, but I would have to pick Thor if I have to pick a winner. All right, the number five seed going against the number 12 seed here. We've got Batman Begins against Dread. This is just bad luck for Dread. I think <laughs> Dread is, is, a, is a, a really fun, entertaining, wonderful surprise of a movie. But Batman was ranked as low as the fifth seed. <laughs> Dread couldn't get ranked any higher than 12. It's got to go against Batman Begins. I can't see how Batman Begins loses this. Batman Begins easily. And I'm also, like, for Dread, I, I actually was not as hyped about it as you and some of the other people that, that saw it. I thought it was okay. So Batman Begins wins easily. Chris Lee? Agreed 100%. I did not like Dread at all. So Batman is easy <laughs> for me for that one. <laughs> all right, now we get into the number six seed, the original, the revered Christopher Reeve's Superman the movie versus the number 11 seed, the third film of the Christopher Nolan franchise, The Dark Knight Rises. I think out of any in this bracket, this has the biggest potential for an upset as far as the lower seed beating the higher seed. But... I, I'm still going to stick with the original Superman. I think there are too many people that had too many problems with the original, with, with The Dark Knight Rises. Superman, the movie, the original with Christopher Reeve, has a very special place in a lot of people's hearts. I think Superman rides this and wins, but there is big potential here for an upset. Dennis? I think The Dark Knight Rises is going to win. Even though I'm not saying it's a superior film to the original Superman, I just think that even though there are a lot of criticisms, like the ones that I have and you have and other people, I think there's so much of a fan base, especially of, of Nolan and the Batman franchise, that people are gonna vote for it no matter what, and it's gonna beat Superman. All right, Chris Lee. This is the hardest one for me yet because I my heart for Superman is so, so, so big. But The Dark Knight Rises for me was just an amazing film that kept me entertained that I completely have watched a million times. So I'm going to have to go with Dark Knight Rises. All right. So this is the first this is the first matchup. You can tell it's getting tight. The first matchup yeah. where we have disagreement on our panel. Mm -hmm. Remember, though, the important thing is how do you guys vote? All right. The never, number seven seed against the number 10 seed, the number seven seed, Man of Steel. Obviously, if it was just up to me, Man of Steel would get like a number two or a number three seed, but it's in the number seven seed against the original Hellboy. Don't be surprised if Hellboy wins. Uh, I'm still picking Man of Steel. I think Man of Steel will win, but a lot of diehard fans, it's this, Hellboy is kind of like the original Superman, the way it's got a very special place in certain people's hearts. Enough people's hearts, Probably not. Man of Steel is going to win, but again, ripe for an upset. What do you think? I think Man of Steel is going to win. If it was against Hellboy 2, I loved Hellboy 2 a lot more than the first Hellboy. A lot Hellboy, of people did, yeah. And I would vote for that over Man of Steel, but because this is the original Hellboy, I think Man of Steel takes this. Chris Lee? Well, as the chat board is well aware, I wasn't a huge fan of Man of Steel, so I have to pick Hellboy, but I loved Hellboy. I loved Ron Perlman. I loved the entire cast. I thought it was amazing, so Hellboy it is. All right, and now down to the final matchup in this bracket. The number eight ranked Captain America, the first Avenger, versus the number nine, uh, The Watchmen. I'm going to go with Captain America, the first Avenger. I, I thought it was a better movie. Uh, and Watchmen is just one of those films that divide a lot of people. A lot of people really love it, and an equal amount of people really hated it. So just because of the, the split opinions and feelings on Watchmen, I think creates a path, an easy path even, for Captain America, the first Avenger. Dennis? I personally like Watchmen more than Captain America. I really like the first half of Captain America, but I kind of a little dozed off for the second half. So I, even though I still liked it, I do think Captain America is going to win this one, even though I think Watchmen's a superior film. Chris Lee? I actually agree with Dennis 100%. I go with Watchmen. Captain America was, was good, but I felt like I was watching two different films at times. I felt like it was a little bit too long and a little bit maybe too much backstory. Um, so I go with Watchmen for sure. All right, folks. Well, that'll do it for the Nolan bracket. Now let's move on to the other half of the bracket known as the Whedon bracket. Running down the seeds for you, the number one seed in the Whedon bracket is obviously the Avengers. The number two seed is X-Men 2. The number three seed is the original Iron Man. Number four seed, uh, surprising to me, is Blade 4. The number five seed is Superman 2 with Christopher Reeve. The number six seed is the original Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. 
Number seven is X-Men First Class. The number eight seed is the original Kick-Ass. The number nine seed is the most recent The Amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield. The number 10 seed is the original Blade. Number 11 seed, the original Michael Keaton Batman. The number 12 seed, the most recent Thor, The Dark World. The number 13 seed, I lost it, there it is, is the second Tim Burton Batman film, Batman Returns. The number 14 seed is The Wolverine, that's the most recent one with Hugh Jackman. The number 15 seed is Hellboy 2. And the number 16 seed is Iron Man 2. So two Iron Man films taking up the number 16 seeds in both brackets. So let's run down the matchups here. We'll start with the number one seed. Number one seeds do not lose to number 16 seeds. They ain't gonna happen here either. It's gonna be the Avengers against Iron Man 2 in the first bracket. This is gonna be like a 90% to 10% yeah. vote, I think. This is a lion slide, right? Yeah, because Iron Man 2 is, at least for me, and I think most people, Iron Man 2 is the weakest of the Iron Man movies, so I don't think it stands any chance at Avengers. Avengers also, like The Dark Knight, is one of the best comic book movies of all time, so I don't think we're, it's gonna be even close. Chris Lee? Avengers all the way. All right, now hey listen, before I get go into the rest of it, one of the things I forgot to mention here, on the link in the description of the video where you click to go and vote, we also have these brackets that you can download. So you can go to that page, it's on our AMC Theaters page, so just click on that link, it'll take you to a page, and you'll see the brackets. I wanna encourage you guys, download the brackets, download these graphics, and then fill in the brackets all the way to the end on your own, and then post them on Twitter using the hashtag Hashtag MMM, as in March Movie Madness, AMC. So MMM AMC. Hashtag MMM AMC. So that way, any of us can just hop on Twitter, search for that hashtag, and see your bracket and how you filled it out. So once again, go to the link that's in the description. You can see the brackets there, download them, then fill out the brackets, and post them on Twitter with the hashtag MMM AMC so we can all look at them and share them together. So with that out of the way, let's move on to the second matchup here. The, the, out of the two brackets, the most interesting number two versus number 15 matchup, I think. This is gonna be the closest widespread one we've got. The number two seed, X-Men 2, versus the number 15 seed, Hellboy 2. Dennis, you were saying Hellboy oh, 2. Oh, man. A lot of people this love this tough. film. To me, this is like something that the seeding would be like right next to each other. Right. For, for me, personally. Oh, I love both of them. X-Men 2 or Hellboy 2. I, I think X-Men 2 is gonna win. The vote, personally, oh man. Yeah, see, for me, X Men, oh, X Men Two, for a very long time, I thought I thought an argument could be made. X Men Two is the best comic book movie ever made. I, th I think for for a period of time that was case. So, while I really enjoyed Hellboy, I think X Men Two is just on a, a certain level. So for me, it's going to be X Men Two. But for you, it's really tight. It's really tight. I, but I who think do you think will advance? I think X Men Two is going to advance. All right, Chris Lee. My pick is definitely Hellboy 2, because I didn't get really excited about the X-Men franchise until First Class, and I liked it, but Hellboy 2 is my pick, but I think that you guys are right, and unfortunately, my pick will not be the most popular. All right, let's move on. The number three seed, uh, the original Iron Man film versus the number 14 seed, The Wolverine. I like The Wolverine. I, I, I thought it was good until the last 15 or so minutes, maybe the last 20 minutes, kind of fell apart, but the first Iron Man it is what launched the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's a very special comic book movie. It's, it's, it's excellent in so many ways. It kind of set the bar for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Iron Man wins this in a landslide. Yeah, easily. And Iron Man, the first Iron Man is actually one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. Yeah. So, and, the, and I enjoyed The Wolverine, but it's not even close. Not close. Chris Lee? Iron Man it is. It's tough to compare these two, too. I think Iron Man's such a fun film, and Wolverine had such a serious tone this time, which it was great, but Iron Man's definitely the winner. Going on to the next matchup, the one I honestly, I couldn't tell you what's going to win this one. It is the number four seed, Blade 2, versus the number 13 seed, Tim Burton's Batman Returns. I love Blade 2. I, really, I think it's the best of the Blade movies. I thought it's, it was funny and the action was incredible. At the time, the CGI was quite cutting edge. At the time. We can look at it now and kind of laugh, but... Um, I'm going to say Blade 2 wins this. But I, I don't know, Dennis. It's it's really close. In my heart, I like Blade Two more than Batman Returns. I actually was disappointed with Batman Returns because I love the original one right. so much. But in terms of voting, it's very close. I'm gonna say Batman Returns edges out Blade Two. Chris Lee. 
I go with Batman Returns. Something about Danny DeVito. <laughs> Can't help it. <laughs> that should be a documentary title. Something about Danny DeVito. All right, the next matchup here is the number five, Superman 2 versus Thor The Dark World. I really like Thor The Dark World. I didn't think it was quite as good as the original Thor, um, but but I quite enjoyed it. But out of all the original Superman movies, to me, it, it, it was general. It was the introduction to General Zod. There's so many great moments in that film. I, I think... I think Superman 2 takes this one over Thor The Dark World. I, I actually like Thor 2 more than Thor 1. I really liked it. And yes, yeah, Superman 2 is a classic. However, in voting, I think we could see an upset here. I think we can see Thor 2 just because it's a more recent film. You're right. I think there are some people watching this show who have probably never seen Superman 2. So, and they might just vote for Thor exactly. the 2 because it's they've seen it. So I think we might see an upset there. Chris Lee? While my heart goes to Superman, my choice is with Thor The Dark World. This movie got me literally yelling at the scream, screen <laughs> at certain parts, so I have to go with Thor The Dark World. All right, let's move on to the next matchup. The next matchup is the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man versus the original Tim Burton Batman. Wow, this is another one. Um, the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man was the film that made people go, you can do Spider-Man. Look at this, you can do it. I'm gonna go with the original Spider-Man. I'm gonna go through, I know I'm making a lot of people mad, but I think, I think it's gonna win, what do you think? I think the original Batman's gonna win this, and I think it's a better movie than the original Spider-Man. I think I might vote for Batman myself, but I, <laughs> I'm just saying I think Spider-Man's gonna win. Crystal Lee? Had I not seen the reboot of The Amazing Spider-Man, I probably would have picked this Spider-Man over it, but because I've seen the newer one, now I completely go to Batman, all day. All right. Let's move on to the next one. The number seven ranked X-Men First Class against the number 10 rank Blade. Uh, Blade was a surprise movie for a lot of people. They, it, they were, I mean, Blade is a comic book character. It kind of came out of nowhere and it turned in a real fun, gritty, R-rated kind of experience. But X-Men First Class, people love this film. I love the film, not as much as some of the other X-Men films, but uh, I, I just, and it's a lot more recent, and that gives it a bit of an advantage as well. I, I think X-Men, I actually think X-Men First Class wins this handily. I agree, just because the franchise alone, X-Men just, unless, it, unless it's like something stained like X-Men 3 where even X-Men fans don't like it. Right. This is something that is loved by most X-Men fans and I think it's gonna take it. Crystal Lee? I really enjoyed Blade, and I really enjoyed just what you said, the grittiness of it, but X-Men First Class is what got me, personally, super excited for more X-Men movies. I was kind of like, eh, another movie, and then I saw that, and it totally did it, so X-Men First Class. All right, and we're down to our last matchup here. It is the number eight seed, Kick-Ass, versus the number nine seed, my, the amazing Spider-Man. I, I mean, if it was, like once once again, if I was the only person putting this, the rankings together, the amazing Spider-Man to me would have been ranked higher. And now it's pitted against this other movie I love so much, Kick-Ass 2. First Kick-Ass. Uh, sorry, the first Kick-Ass, the original Kick-Ass, I mean. Uh, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give my opinion last. Okay. Chris Lee, let's go with you first. <laughs> Kick-Ass no, or The Amazing Spider-Man? The Amazing Spider-Man all day long. Kick-Ass was really fun and it was different, but to me, The ama Amazing Spider-Man got me excited, had me at the edge of my seat, I was yelling, I was excited. It's totally The Amazing Spider-Man. For my own taste, I have Kick-Ass edging out The Amazing Spider-Man, which I did really like, but I think Kick-Ass is gonna win this one because The Amazing Spider-Man, it's not controversial, but it is it is dividing amongst the Spider-Man fans. Some people really liked it like we did, and some people hated it. They, they prefer the Tobey Maguire, Sam Raimi one, so I think that's gonna split the vote and most people are gonna go for a Kick-Ass. I am, my personal vote is, oh, I love both of these movies so much, but I'm, my personal vote's gonna go to The Amazing Spider-Man. I just think it was that much better. Uh, and I love the original Kick-Ass. I think uh, a little bit will, that will play into it is let's remember, not nearly as many people saw the original yeah. Kick-Ass as it deserved to have see it, as saw uh, The Amazing Spider-Man. So I'm going to guess that The Amazing Spider-Man will actually win this bracket and move on to then get thoroughly trounced by Avengers, uh, which will be <laughs> Iron Man 2, no problem. So, uh, but anyway, so folks, that will do it. That is our rundown of the Nolan bracket and the Whedon, Whedon bracket. Don't forget, Check in the description of this video right near the top. You'll see the link where you go to vote. 
Go to that page, download the bracket um, graphics, fill them out and put them up on Twitter at hashtag MMMAMC so we can all take a look and search and see the way you fill out your bracket as well. And fill out the voting form and click submit. On Friday, we will announce the winners of the round one matchups as well as show you the matchups for round number two. And thanks so much for participating in this. I'm already having fun with this. I think this is great. All right, folks, listen, we don't have any time today for live questions. We've already gone a little bit over time, so we're going to call it a day today. Promise tomorrow we'll leave a little bit of extra time tomorrow for a live viewer questions. So thank you so much for joining us, guys. Don't forget. Great movies playing over at AMC Theaters right now. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for your theater, showtime, movie ticket information. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Click on that thumbs up button, it helps us out. And listen, if you haven't done so already, if you like what we do here, click on the subscribe button and become a subscriber to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. And don't forget, if you want an audio-only podcast of this show, look in the description of this video and you'll find links to our Stitcher and our iTunes. I want to thank, first of all, the guy sitting at the table with me, Mr. Dennis Zen. Dennis, where can people find you online? You guys can find me on Twitter, at Think Hero, or on YouTube, Think Hero Pro. Sitting way over there, she is the bracket buster herself, <laughs> Miss Chrisley Lee Kennedy. Chris Lee, where can people find you online? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram, at Chris Lee and the movie chick. And uh, you guys can find me on the various social media networks at John Campia. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys. My name's John Campia for AMC Movie News. And until tomorrow, bye-bye. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to AMC Movie News on YouTube. It's free and a great way to stay updated with all the latest movie news and check out our daily show, AMC Movie Talk. Also, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter to stay in the loop for our special prizes, giveaways, and contests.